Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is super exciting because as you can see we have some wrapped presents underneath my tree and the reason for that is I wrapped up all my physical TBR books that I wasn't planning on reading in December or I knew that I wasn't going to be reading. I wrapped up all my physical TBR books and so today we are going to be unwrapping about six or seven books depending on how I'm feeling for the month of January. I have books listed one through 42 I had to use four different wrapping papers I know you can't see the stack right here but we have this like truck Christmas paper we have the plaid and then we have this like snowman and then we also just have prop plain brown ones so basically what I'm gonna do is I didn't like draw like on pieces of paper I'm just gonna ask Google to shuffle 1 through 42 and I am so nervous for this I don't know I I have so many books, obviously, I literally have 42, and some of them are double wrapped, so I have more than 42 books, and somehow I always feel like I have nothing to read, I need to go book shopping, but obviously that's not true, and so this idea, whoever came up with it, is such a good, like, they're genius, because this is perfect. Got a little generator on here, and so I made it the max, so we're just gonna generate it. Oh, number five. Okay, so number five is right here. Hardcover, which always scares me because for some reason I never am drawn to hardcover books. But that does not mean this book is bad. But I will, I will say I'm very nervous to do this. Also my wrapping, I think while I was doing this, it got a little bit better. But anyways, let's see what I have here. Oh, okay. So it is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers. I actually got this book while I was in the UK. I've heard so many good things about this book. It is definitely, I think, a more like um, just a general contemporary fiction book and I'm very excited. So it says, New York is slipping from Cleo's grasp. Sure, she's at a different party every other night, but she barely knows anyone. Her student visa is running out and she doesn't even have money to buy cigarettes. But then she meets Frank. 20 years older, Frank's life is full of all the success and excess that Chloe lacks. He offers her the chance to be happy, the freedom to paint, and the opportunity to apply for a green card. She offers him a life imbued with beauty and art and hopefully a reason to cut back on his drinking. They're everything each other needs right now. Cleo and Frank run headfirst into a romance that neither of them can quite keep up with. It reshapes their lives and the lives of those around them, whether that's Cleo's best friend struggling to embrace his gender identity in the week of her marriage, or Frank's financially dependent sister arranged sugar daddy dates after being cut off. Ultimately, this chance meeting between two strangers outside of a New Year's Eve party changes everything, for better or worse. Cleopatra and Frankenstein is an astounding and painfully relatable debut novel about the spontaneous decisions that shape our entire lives and those imperfect relationships born of unexpectedly perfect evenings. This is kind of perfect because they meet on New Year's Eve, so like, that's actually insane. And this is a book that I was very excited to read. I've seen a lot of people rate it five, four, four to five stars, which means it'll be really good. And I feel like this will be an exciting book to start off the new year with. So this is our first book we have on our January TBR. Let's generate another number. We got 27, which I believe is the snowman wrapping paper. Oh no. Oh my gosh. We have Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. Guys, if you know, you know Penelope Douglas, I've read one book by her, Punk 57. And this is a relationship between a daughter and her boyfriend's father. So there's an age gap in here. So, I'm just gonna read the back of it, we're gonna talk about it. Jordan, he took me in when I had nowhere else to go. He doesn't use me, hurt me, or forget about me. He doesn't treat me like I'm nothing. Take me for granted or make me feel unsafe. He remembers me, laughs with me, and looks at me. He listens to me, protects me, and sees me. I can feel his eyes on me after over the breakfast table and my heart pumps so hard when I hear him pull in the driveway after work. I have to stop this. It can't happen. My sister once told me there are no good men and if you find one, he's probably unavailable. Only Pike Lawson isn't the unavailable one. I am. I took her in because I thought I was helping. She'd cook a few meals and clean up a little. It was an easy arrangement. As the days go on though, it's becoming anything but easy. I have to stop my mind from drifting to her and stop holding my breath every time I bump into her in the house. I can't touch her and I shouldn't want to. The more I find my path crossing hers, though, the more she's becoming a part of me. But we're not free to give in to this. She's 19 and I'm 38, and her boyfriend's father. Unfortunately, they both just moved into my house. <sighs> oh boy, guys. This is gonna be... 
this is gonna be interesting. That's that's all I can say. That's all I can say. That, I don't even know where do we go from there. I have no idea. All right, another number. Oh, 26. Okay, that was not very far. Guys, I think 26 is another Penelope Douglas book because I'm pretty sure I wrapped them together. So, oh boy. Let me just pull it out and I'm gonna look. Yeah, I already knew it was Penelope Douglas. So, I guess January is gonna be a Penelope Douglas month. This is Credence. I'm pretty sure this is some sort of like thruple type situation. Tyrion de Haas doesn't care about anything anymore. The only child of a film producer and a starlit wife, she's grown up with wealth and privilege but not love or guidance. Shipped off to boarding schools from an early age, it was still impossible to escape the loneliness and carve out a life of her own. The shadow of her parents' fame followed her everywhere. But when they suddenly pass away, she knows she should be devastated. But has anything really changed? She's always been alone, hasn't she? Jake Vanderberg, her father's stepbrother and her only living relative, assumes guardianship of Tiernan, who is still two months shy of 18. Sent to live with him and his two sons, Noah and Caleb, in the mountains of Colorado, Tiernan soon learns that these men now have a say in what she chooses to care or not care about anymore. As the three of them take her under their wing, teach her to work and survive in the remote woods, far away from the rest of the world, she slowly finds her place among them and as a part of them. And she also realizes that lines blur, blur and rules become easy to break when no one else is watching. One of them has her, the other one wants her, but he, he's going to keep her. Okay, so it's like a, a corporal thing, a quadruple couple thing. Ugh, I don't know. I cannot believe somehow both of these ended up on my January TBR. But this is what this, this book is for, is I'm going to read these and then we'll go from there. But, oh god, what are the chances, guys? Okay, we're going to generate again. Okay, we got 10. I know you guys can't see my screen, but I swear I'm not lying. 10, here we go. Oh, okay. This is interesting because it's an Ellen Hildebrand. She is a summer author and we are in January. So this is gonna be very interesting. When Mallory Blessing's son Link receives her deathbed instructions to call a number on a slip of paper in her desk drawer, he certainly does not expect Jake McLeod to answer. It's the late spring of 2020 and Jake's wife Ursula de Gordonsi is a front runner in the upcoming presidential election. Link is sure there's been a mistake. How do Mallory and J Jake know each other? Flashback to the sweet summer of 1993, Mallory has just inherited a beachfront cottage on Nantucket from her aunt, and she agrees to host her brother Cooper's bachelor party. Cooper's college friend Jake McLeod attends, and Jake and Mallory form a bond that will persevere through marriage, children, and Ursula's stratospheric political rise until Mallory learns she's dying. I don't know how I feel about this being on my TBR because it's literally like a summer beach read, but I don't know. <laughs> we're just gonna we're gonna keep on going and we'll see what happens. But do it like two more times so we have a total of six books. So here's me doing it again. 29. Oh my gosh, what is up with all all of these numbers? This is a hardcover book. I'm I would be lying if I said I wasn't scared. I'm so scared. Ooh, okay. Cartographers. So this is a mystery book, I'm pretty sure. Nell Young's whole life and greatest passion is cartography. Her father, Dr. Dana Young, is a legend in the field and Nell's personal hero, but she hasn't seen or spoken to him ever since he cruelly fired her and destroyed her reputation after an argument over an old cheap gas station highway map. But when Dr. Young is found dead in his office at the New York Public Library, where this very same seemingly worthless map hidden in his desk, Nell can't resist investigating. To her surprise, she soon discovers that the map is incredibly valuable and exceedingly rare. In fact, she may now have the only copy left in existence because a mysterious collector has been hunting down and destroying every last one, along with anyone who gets in the way. But why? To answer the, that question, Nell embarks on a dangerous journey to reveal a dark family secret and discovers a true power that lies in maps. So yeah, it's a little mystery book and I'm very excited for this. I actually got this in March for my book of the month, so it's been a while where I haven't read this, so it'll be good to finally give it a read. So this is gonna be our last little, last little one. So let's generate we got 40, okay, 40. This one's like really thick, but it's a paperback and I'm trying to think of what it is, but I can't. I don't think it's another Elin because hers are the same size. So I genuinely have no idea what this is, which makes me very scared, but we're gonna open it because that's what, that's what we're supposed to do here. <laughs> no. 
god. Oh god, oh god, this is a gangster romance, I'm pretty sure. A dark romance, and I think this will be my first one I've ever read. Oh god, I'm terrified. Okay, writer Garrett and Kenzo and Diesel, the Vipers. They run this town and everyone in it. Their deals are as sordid as their business, and their reputation is enough to bring a grown man to his knees, forcing him to beg for mercy. They are not people you mess with, yet my dad did. The old man ran up a debt with them and then sold me to cover his losses. Yes, he sold me. They own me now. I'm theirs in every sense of the word, but I've never been meek and compliant. These men, they look at me with longing. They're scarred, blood-stained hands holding me tight. They want everything I am, everything I have to give, and won't stop until they get just that. They can own my body, but they will never have my heart. The vipers, I'm going to make them regret the day they took me. This girl, she bites too. <laughs> okay, I don't know what... I signed up for it, but this was not it. Look at our look at our spread right now, okay? We have three dark romances, like, and then we have a mystery and then two romances. One contemporary and then one's a summer. This is this is terrifying. <laughs> Those are the six books I'm gonna try to read. I will have a video done by the end of January where I try to read these six books luck because I'm actually terrified I'm very I'm very scared if I'm, if I'm being honest a lot of these books like Den of Vipers and then the two Penelope Douglas books I bought all three of these when they were I just saw them on book talk had no idea what they were about honestly I probably wouldn't have bought these if I have read the back which maybe don't like just buy things because you see them getting popular because maybe it's not for you <laughs> just thought I mean most people probably know that but apparently I didn't um but yeah this is my little spread let me know what you guys are reading in January have you tried the wrapping paper trend it is it is actually a lot of fun and I'm excited to see like what the rest of these are I want to film a bookshelf tour and then like a reorganizing my bookshelf but obviously I have these all wrapped so I'm like do I do that or do I, do I not I don't know We'll talk to you guys very soon. Be on the lookout for me actually reading these books. Like I said, it'll be done by the end of the month, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I will talk to you guys very soon. Peace and love. Bye, guys.